Hey everybody, Mike Harland here, uh, Choir Room Extra, another great compelling artist and man of God sitting in my office and as we are known to do, when one of these guys gets anywhere near us, we grab them around the collar, we drag them in my office, we turn the camera on because we want to talk to them. And we are so blessed today to have Jared Anderson. Jared, God bless you. Thanks, Thanks for coming man. to Lifeway. It's good. Thanks We're thrilled to have you here. Uh, Jared, uh, as I told you just a minute ago, for the sake of the folks watching today, if you go to lifewayworship.com and go to the search thing and type in your name, a page-long list of titles mm -hmm. comes up. Wow. And, uh, and that's why we want to talk to you, because God has put inside of you a gift and a treasure of reconnecting God's Word with His people. Mm -hmm. We like to quote Psalm 149.6 around here. Let the word of praise be in their mouths, the two-edged sword in their hands. Mm -hmm. And your songs are doing that. And thank you, my dear brother, for uh, using your gifts for him. Pleasure. Honor. Now, uh, you're not, you don't live in Nashville. Where do you no, live? Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs. Yeah. So you're enjoying this 99-degree temperature today, aren't you? By faith. Yeah. <laughs> So if, if, I mean, we're sitting in my office and it is the first week of June, if we were in Colorado Springs today, what, what would the temperature be? Oh, it would be about 78. Probably. What are we doing sitting here? Let's go there. Well, you're welcome, man. Come on. <laughs> All right, now tell me about uh, where you were born and, mm -hmm. and your experience coming up in church and, and where music came in. Just give us the yeah. story. My folks moved to Colorado when I was nine years old mm. and started attending New Life Church there where... Uh, I serve now. Yeah. And uh, my folks are passionate about prayer. Uh, awesome. In missions. We spent three years over in Malaysia with Youth of a Mission. And um, all growing up, every Saturday night, we had in our, in our old auditorium um, the flags hanging from the ceiling. Wow. And there, they... Every Saturday night, we go in the auditorium. They just turn a few uh, lights on over the stage. They just love to walk around and pray underneath the flags. Wow. And they say, Jerry, just go up and play on the piano. And there's a grand piano up there. Wow. We didn't turn anything on and for an hour and a half, just pray and worship. And mm. those are the seats, you know. And uh, coming up through high school, to be honest, like, being at church on a Saturday night is the last place <laughs> you really wanted to be, you know? Yeah. And it's I kind of ended up being one of those things. It's like going to the gym. You never want to go, but when you've gone, you're glad you went. Yeah. You know, you yeah. feel better. And uh, it was those, I, I feel like everything I have, I, I'm standing on the shoulders, you know, wow. the people that have laid it out before me and, and my folks sowed those seeds mm. and I think that's um, I've just been blessed awesome so when did you start studying music and realizing that music was going to be yeah. you know I say it this way um, we have a message but music's not our message no. music is our language right at some point you started developing the language yeah. of music so tell us a little of that story um, I think I got it when I was born in Minnesota. We went to a church up there, and the guy that was the worship leader played the piano. Hmm. And I think that's where it hit my head first. Yeah. But um, I wanted to take piano, and they and I started when I was eight years old. And they said, uh, "We'll pay for lessons, but you got you can't quit for four years," which is <laughs> quite a commitment yeah. of an yeah. eight, of an eight year old. Um, so. And I did. I I, I wanted. To, I I love playing. Practicing is another thing. Yeah, you know, exactly. Sometimes. <laughs> exactly. So, um, but I wanted to quit a bunch of times, and I didn't. And and it just it was kind of with me, you know, all the time. And I wrote my first song uh, when I was fifteen. Wow. What was the name of it? It's called "Lord Make Me an Instrument of You." Mm. And um, wow. Yeah, it had. Uh, it had a minor five chord in it. Okay. And that thing drove me nuts. I couldn't <laughs> find that. I just oh, wow. spent weeks chasing down, like, where? It was in your head. It was, but I you could hear it. I'm like, that, that's not the right chord. That's not the right chord. Ah, that's, that's, that's awesome. It eluded me. But, uh, yeah, that was my very first, 
first mm. song, and um, I just love I, I just love the process. I, I tell songwriters like you gotta fall in love with the process, because if all you want's a great, you know, mm. the hit song or something, you'll you'll beat yourself up. Yeah. You know, it won't yeah. it won't be any fun. But the yeah. process of chasing down an idea I used to just write lyrics to other people's songs and fill notebooks up with the strangest, wow. wackiest. <laughs> do you have all that? Thing. Oh, I do. <laughs> wow. I do. It's funny. To watch. That's, that's yeah, great. It's all right, so the <laughs> musical gift is being developed and you're hearing songs and you're beginning. But somewhere along the line, and you talk about the faith of your parents and how God was burning into your life mm -hmm. early, the musical gift's coming along. There's a faith that's growing too. Mm -hmm. So talk a little about the, the the faith journey of meeting Christ and and really becoming a disciple. My uh, this is interesting. Like I, I grew up on the front row, you know. Yeah. And uh, we had individual devotions every morning. Our family family devotions every night. We memorized chapters of the Bible. That's awesome. Verbally, just out loud, memorizing. You know. Um, and but it took it was a transition you know to find that for myself i i really wanted to especially with music and when i first when i first got to, we got into college i didn't really didn't want to do worship music mm -hmm. i love god where'd you go to college i went to oral roberts university oh, cool. yeah. tulsa oklahoma yeah and uh and i didn't i want to do something other than worship music i want mm -hmm. more than three chords i yeah. want more than sing-along songs yeah it's a beautiful creation. I want to, I want to dive to the depths, you know, mm. and I want to break the rules. Mm. And I, I wrestle, but man, there is no, there is every, and I tried to escape. Mm. I tried to run from the church, and all the doors were closed in my face. And I, and I finally, I said, God, I've got all this passion and all this burn. Mm. For, and you gave it to me. I didn't ask for this because I know these things come from you. Yeah. I said if this, if these passions never mm. leave my living room, mm. I'll follow you. Mm. And I want the peace of God more than I want anything else. Wow. And those, those seeds stuck yeah. with me. And that has been. And like I mean, you said it, said it well. We don't. We don't preach music. We yeah. preach the gospel. Amen. And God, if God can speak through a donkey, He can speak through a song. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. And through anything. So I, yeah. I, that's a passion of mine to to expand the imagination of our congregations, of leaders. Like go beyond the music. You know, mm -hmm. get get into the faith, and the music will come naturally. Yeah. Ma music will come as a byproduct. Yeah. Um, but dig in, dig a well, you know. Find the, find the well of the spirit. Dig yeah. in. Don't don't just don't just execute other people's songs. Yeah. Don't do that. That's it's not correct. time. You know, I, uh, the way I've come to think about it is ministry, and songwriting would be certainly ministry, comes out of the overflow mm -hmm. of my own experience with Christ, and and ministry leaves you. It, it's something, I, not to over spiritualize the story, but in in when when the woman crawled on her hands and knees and touched the hem mm -hmm. of the garment. Um, Jesus said, who, who touched me? Mm -hmm. and, and the disciples were like, man, everybody's touching you. What are right. you talking about? And he said, no, I felt the power leave. And, and I think that's an example of all of us who are in ministry that when we serve, we are giving something. Mm -hmm. It is going out of us. Uh, the way it went out of Christ that day, and, and here's the most important thing I would say to a songwriter, and I just want to see how you would, what your take on this would be, is that songwriting is, is a flow out of you. You better be doggone sure mm -hmm. that something's coming in. Yep. If nothing's coming in, it's not going to be long before nothing of worth is going to be coming right. out. I mean, that's what you're you, saying, you, isn't it? You've got, yeah, good uh, disciples leak. Yeah, they that's leak, good. You know, That's good. Cause you, and you can't help that. Yeah. After after a while, the uh, I, I tell songwriters um, have every guard and and be very conscious of what's going in, and have no yeah. filter on what goes there out. There you go. Let anything stuff. anything come out, whether it's 
a lament, whether it's anger, whether it's any any of those emotions, are all from the Lord. That's great. Don't 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 try and bottle like, ooh, this is what people want to hear. Yeah. Don't cater to the yeah. fear of man, because that'll that'll eat, that'll poison you. Yeah. Don't have any inhibitions about what comes out of you. Only have inhibitions about what goes in. That's you. awesome. And that way. You may stumble on something you never even thought was there that God's going to use to speak to people, whether it's a song or a, or a business idea or a yeah, product or exactly. anything. You know, wow. That's where the spirit of the Lord is. There's creativity. There's that is freedom. awesome. You know, uh, I'm going to use that. And I'm going to take credit for it. So thank you for sharing <laughs> that. So that was really that's well said. <laughs> um, that's well said. I mean, it, it really is. If we'll guard what goes in. God stewards what goes yeah. out, and and wow, that's well said. There's freedom in that. All right, now let me let me just share this with you, and you guys are watching. Um, amazed, beauty of the Lord, counting on God, great I am, hear us from heaven, lift the name, prepare the way, rescue the whole earth, treasure, counting on God, and that's just what's offered at LifewayWorship.com. There are anthems. Our friends at Praise Gathering just did an anthem of counting on God. Um, you, you are impacting the church, and God is using your gift to put, put the word of praise in the mouths of God's people. And, and we are just blessed by that. So, so what's happening now? I mean, th if I'm sitting here a year from now, what am I going what, to... What am I... What, I mean, you don't have to give me titles, but... Sure. You know, but it's... What's, what's coming? Um, what's God doing now? I have been... Uh, two things. I took a I w took a missions trip down to visit a missionary friend of ours in southern Mexico mm. and crawled through the mountains with him. He works in the villages mm. with the the Indians, not the, mm. the Mexicans. Yeah. Also live in the towns, you. but the Indians live out and they're kind of the castaways. That experience rocked me and taught me a lot about discipleship. Mm. One on one. You come with me, and we'll go minister to these people. And yeah. you open the word of God and share, and then I'll open the word of God and share, and then we'll pray for people. And that just had such a profound mm. influence on me. And, it, and they don't—they go to people. They don't wait for people to come to the church, you know. And then I, the other experience is I read the book *The Pilgrim's Progress* mm. by John Bunyan, the old, the old English yeah. one, and the idea of the narrow road is mm. burning in me a lot. Uh, wow. Wide the gate and broad the road that leads yeah. to destruction. Small the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And man, I want to be on the narrow road. Yeah. You know, whatever, whatever that, wherever it leads. You know, I want to be on the narrow road. That's where I'm pushing. I, I feel like I'm leaning in that direction. And. Um, that's just been a that's that's on the burn right now. Yeah. Well, um, there's a new project, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a live record. Yeah. So talk about recording a live worship album. What's that like? I mean, it's, you're not in a studio. Sure. It's not a controlled environment. Right. Well, I, we at our church. That's about all we do. Yeah. You know, with desperation and new life yeah. worship, and and um, it's. Uh, you got to make sure the songs are working before you get there. <laughs> so do you do that? Do you? Yeah. You've written a new song and you don't know if it's going to live. Yeah, you got to teach. So it. you're in your church. Yeah, you got to teach. Yeah. It. All right. You know who that? Who does the exact same thing that was sitting in that chair just a few weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Tommy Walker. Yeah, man. When Tommy writes a song, his church hears it first. Yeah. And and he he told me, see if you would agree with this. He said, I sing it three times. Yeah. And after the third time, if people aren't asking me to sing it again, right. I don't sing it again. Right. I start working on it again. Right. Is that kind of your Definitely. Head? Yeah, we, got, we give it three weeks. And if it if it lives, great. If it doesn't, to the... Now, have you ever had one that you thought, okay, God's, God's on this one, and then no. it didn't live? Does that happen? Well, here's the thing. I couldn't believe the things that I think are going to be significant usually aren't. <laughs> and the things that I don't think are that significant end up being. And that, like, with the songs you mentioned, it, it was it was like, wow, that was cool. And then you just kind of move on. 
Yeah. And then somebody's like, hey, we're looking for songs or anything yeah, going. I'm like, well, and they start talking and it kind of pops back in your head and you're like, well, yeah, I do this. Yeah, so play it for you. And they're like, yeah, let's try that. <laughs> and then you're like, man, I wasn't, didn't see that. How did that sneak up on me again? You know what I mean? <laughs> you're like, I think I would know by now. Yeah. Okay, here's something I tell songwriters. And you, you tell me, we're doing a songwriting seminar here. It's got to be, for a songwriter that's passionate about following Christ and really serving Him with the gift, mm -hmm. you've got to be able to answer the question, is it enough for me if God's the only person that ever hears Come on. Me? Yeah. Is that enough for me? Come on. Because I think some songs God gives even writers. Right. He only intends for Himself. Would you agree with that? My... This killed me. Uh, a buddy of mine said, um, "Worship leaders don't lead; they worship." Mm. There, there's only one audience. Yeah, you know, and well, yeah, there it is. We are ministering unto the Lord. Yeah. There's no, there's no number one on CCLI is yeah. not as important. Yeah. <laughs> As ministering and Sorry, support. friends at CCLI. He didn't mean that, but go ahead. No, no. Yeah. They, would, they would agree they, with They would this, definitely they agree. Would, the ministry are... is unto the Lord. Yeah. The, the only reason we have this music is because a lifestyle exists. Yeah. And if we if we trade the lifestyle you for go. the music, come on. The music will die. Isn't that something? Did y'all hear that? Say that again. This music <laughs> exists because a lifestyle exists. Yeah. And yeah. if we trade wow exchange the lifestyle for the music it will die and the enemy of our souls is subtle enough yeah that that's exactly the strategy he and would he go want, after all it? he wants to do is distract you yeah with what's good exactly well instead of what's best. so uh, we're just you and i could sit here all day and they don't have time and you don't either but um but but watch this so if 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 we do believe what we just said mm -hmm. and i believe it and i know you believe it then pu getting published mm -hmm. is not the goal. No. And the energy a writer, now hear this songwriter, the energy you spend on the publishing side is wasted energy, isn't it? Man, yeah. I, I mean, I, you're stewarding songs, sure. but there's a difference between stewarding something and, and promoting and, and yeah. going after something. Right. So, so if that's true, sure. Tell, tell us that story in your life. How did you go from at the piano writing songs right. and expressing your worship and leading in your church to, to I'm sitting in Nashville, Tennessee, loading my website with your songs. Right. So tell us the journey of how God did that. I, um, I did not want to be a worship leader. <laughs> <laughs> this, it, my, my worship pastor asked me to come. And... When you're faithful to serve those God's put in authority over, there you go. He blesses you. He does. He does. And um, I didn't ask for a publishing deal. I never asked to do a record. Um, I I have stepped out in faith and made records when no one's told me to. Yeah. Just because I it was in, I it, my thing is love the Lord your God with all your heart. Be in submission to those in authority over you. And do what's in your heart to do. There you go. Because you can't. It's pretty simple. You isn't cannot it? fail if you love God and you're under authority. You cannot yeah. fail. That's exactly what Jesus said. You know, the Ten Commandments. There are ten of those. Yeah. Four of them relate to God. Six of them relate to how we relate to everybody else. Jesus took those ten and made them two. Mm -hmm. And they they actually, if you'll notice what Jesus said when he was answering the Pharisees' question about what's the greatest commandment, mm -hmm. he was quoting Deuteronomy six, mm -hmm. the Shema. But the, those two commands boil down the Ten Commandments. Right. So he took the Ten Commandments and boiled them down to two and said, just go do that. Yeah. It's really simple, isn't it? it yeah, it's and it's simple. not like there's, there's no... I wrote a song in college uh, about doing music called I Think I'll Charge Tickets to the Sunset. <laughs> <laughs> That's what all this is. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. Like, I didn't yeah. ask for this yeah. gift. Yeah. I, it, was, it was a free gift to yeah. me. Yeah. Like... To try and go make money on this? Come on. Come I've got on, a man. cartoon. I've got this file on my desk called Stuff that if I get something, I go, I want to keep that. Just throw it in the yeah. Stuff file. 
And I've got this cartoon in my stuff file of a guy sitting on a, he's sitting on a, a stool and he's got a guitar strapped around his neck and he's got a boom mic in his mouth. And, and the caption said, and he's got big hair and all. The caption says, the song I'm about to sing for you is a song that God gave me and, and, and birthed in my spirit and gave me this wonderful song. It came straight from the Lord and I'm going to share it with you now. And any unauthorized reproduction of this song gives me the right to sue your pants off. Please <laughs> So, now that's not to say we ought to be reproducing things on author. Sure. That's not my point. Right. But you're right. It's how easy for us to hold the gift as if we own it. Right. Wow. And yeah. the closer we hold on to the gift, uh, the less effective the gift will be. Yeah. I don't know where to stop this yeah. other than to say, uh, thanks, man. Man, it's a pleasure. And uh, you know what? We, we want to affirm what God's doing in your life. And, and affirm um, his activity in your life and, and, and how he is using the giftings and the experiences and the perspectives that he's given you as a disciple. Uh, and you are, uh, God's using you in a powerful way, Jerry. We really appreciate it. We can't wait to see what else he does, and, uh, we're, but we're very grateful for what he's already done. And uh, just want to speak the Lord's blessing in your life. I tell you what, uh, closing, I'm going to let you have the closing word. I feel like Oprah all of a sudden. <laughs> But anyway, uh, I'm not giving anything away today. Um, uh, but uh, uh, I'm going to let you look in the camera mm. and, and speak just a word of blessing and encouragement over. Because the people that are watching this are worship leaders or songwriters. Uh, they're passionate about worship and leading God's people in worship. Uh, just speak a word of blessing and encouragement. Man, I just pray over my friends, Father. Just anoint them. Mm. Bless them with yes with your presence, with your guiding hand. Watch over them. Keep them safe. Keep them from distractions. Yes. And let our eyes be fixed on you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jared, thank you, buddy. God bless you. See you soon. All right.